Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to use JSON Utility to load in some JSON data in our game, and that way we can do something with it if we want to. So first of all, what I'm going to need is I'm going to need to create a folder. We're going to have our JSON file stored inside of a folder called Streaming Assets. Now this is a folder that is not built into the game. It's not compiled into the game. It's actually just a folder in our game directory when we build it. So the contents of this folder can be edited outside of the game, right? You don't have to uh, rebuild the game every time you make a, a, an edit to your JSON or texture files, whatever you're having. Now, you, you would handle things differently depending on the scale of the game or depending on the type of, of files you're working with. But in this case, streaming assets will be great for the JSON that we're going to be using. So I'm going to create uh, created my streaming assets folder, and inside of this we're going to create a JSON file. Now, since Unity doesn't have a way to just create like a text file inside of their create menu, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up my uh, my streaming assets folder, right click on that, and go to open C sharp project, and that's going to open this in Visual Studio for me. And then I'm going to just create a new. Notice that it's my new Unity project create a new file. I'm going to go File, New, and I'm going to go to File, and it's going to load up the File Creation menu, and I'm going to search for JSON, just like that. I'm going to create a new JSON file, and click Open. I'm going to save this in my Streaming Assets folder. Now, depending on how you created this, if it did not work the same as mine, you may not have to actually save yours. If you already have your project loaded into Visual Studio, it'll work a bit differently. But for me, I'm going to save this now into Streaming Assets. I'm going to call it, I'll just call it creature.json, just like that. And I'll go back into Unity, go into Streaming Assets, and I have creature, and it's a JSON file. Now this is going to represent just a, a generic creature in our game. So what I would do is I would just set up a couple properties. The first one being name. And I'm going to call it, uh, let's see, yo, yo mo. And I'll give it a, a level. So it'll be level. He's level seven. And then we can give it some stats. So we can do like an array of, of integers. So I'll call it stats. And I'll make this an array. And I'll just have just a couple integers here, just like that. So now I have a creature named Yummo that's level seven with the stats of four and seven. We can say it's power and toughness. So four and seven, uh, power, toughness. Now you probably would not have your game laid out like this, but this is just for an example. So with that, creature now has some data in it. So we have to bring that data into a script file so we can do something with it in our game so you can handle it in your game however you'd like to so I want to create just uh, see a JSON demo you would have so you have like an, an item database right you would have an item database controller that could be used to build out the data the database from a JSON file or you have a creature database that the has a controller that's whole purpose is to just build the monsters out of the JSON data and put it into a C sharp object that your game can understand and recognize so you don't have to constantly query the JSON to find the right objects. So I'll open up JSON demo in Visual Studio. And the first thing I'm going to need is I want a string variable that's going to store the path to our file, to our creature.json file. So I'm just gonna call it string and I'm gonna say it's uh it's path. And then I also want to have a string that represents the actual text data in that file. So the raw JSON data. So I'll call it JSON string. And that's great. And all of this is going to happen in this case in start. You'll probably have in your database, you'll have like a, say you have an item database. You could have like a construct item database method that is called whenever that object is constructed or whenever you need to build your item database, whenever you're loading in all your assets. However, you're handling that, you would handle this in line with that whenever you're loading in your items or whenever you're loading in all of your databases. So I would do void and start since we're doing this in start for the example. 
and I would set up everything in here. So the first thing I want is I want a path to the JSON file. So I'm going to say path is equal to. And then I want to go through application, which is a Unity Engine class. And this gives us access to a couple of things. Well, quite a few things. But what I want is I want the path to that streaming assets folder. So if I type in streaming assets, it gives me streaming assets path. It contains the path to the streaming assets folder, which is read only. And that's exactly what we want. So if I do that, that's fine. Now path is equal to the streaming assets path. But I want the path specifically to a certain file. So I want to concatenate on the end of that the name of the file, uh, but with a slash. So do slash, and it's called creatures or creature.json. Make sure you have the slash there, though, because this does not end in a slash. It does not have a trailing slash. So you have got to put a slash there because you're going inside of the folder right here, inside of the streaming assets folder, and finding creature.json. Now, you could have, like, subfolders inside of your streaming assets path for creatures and items and, and all that stuff and materials and textures, whatever you have. But in this example, it's the only thing in there, so we can just do it very easily like that. And the next thing I'd want to do is I'd want to do something with that path, right? So we want to load it in by using the file system. So we want to go through file and load it in. But to do that, I need access to the input output namespace, which is in system is IO. So that'll give us access to the file without having to say, hey, we're going through system.io.file. We can just say file dot and I'm going to load in the text just like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set JSON string to be equal to do file and type in read and we get a couple of different options here I'm going to read in all text because we just want the whole blob of text to come in and be stored in JSON string so I'm going to do read all text not line by line just read it all and this is looking for just a string path that's nice because we have a string that represents the path. And now JSON string, if everything works out for us, will be equal to the data inside of JSON, uh, or inside of the, of the creature.json file. And that's because read all text, what it does is it finds the file, it opens it up for us, it reads out all the text, and then it closes the file. Now you could do all that individually through file, but we are just using the one method to handle it all for us because that's all we needed to do is open it read it and close it and that's doing it for us now what we have to do is we have to actually parse that data into an object so we have creature here and what i need to do is i need to map that data as json Oh, script file and you could probably have your own separate script file your own system entirely but I want to do public I'm just going to call it creature uh, sorry it's a class public class creature and this is where it gets kind of interesting because we have to set up the in a way the schematic for what the JSON utility is going to map our JSON data to. So we have name, level, and stats. Name is a string. So what I can do is I'll say public string and we'll call it name. Now notice that it matches the properties under JSON exactly. Right? Typically I would have lowercase on just uh, variables and uppercase on properties. But since we named it that in JSON, we'll just keep it like that for now. The next is level. So it's an integer. And I will call it level. And then the next is an array of ints, just like that. And I will call this stats. Now we don't have to define a length because it will handle that. It will look at the length of the JSON array and then initiate this with the correct length and then fill it. Notice I am using variables though instead of properties as that is the only thing that's supported by the Unity Serializer. So we have to use that and abide by the rules of the serializer in unity and that brings me to my next point we have to add an attribute to this class and tell the system that hey this is serializable uh, 
So whenever we try to map it to our JSON, the uh, JSON utility knows what it's working with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an attribute to this creature class here, and I'm going to go to system dot serializable, serializable, <laughs> serializable. There we go. And that's all we need to do for our creature class. This is very straightforward, very simple, but you could have lists in here of, of arrays, and you can have arrays of arrays, and you can have all these things, but for uh, just this keeping it simple, that's going to work for us. So now what I want to do is I want to create a new creature, right? So I'm going to do creature type. So the, it's referencing the creature class we just created, and I want to call it Yamo. It doesn't have to match the name, it just is going to because it's going to be a creature with the name Yummo. So I want to call the object for now Yummo. And create it, uh, see it's going to be, we're going to go through the JSON utility. So type in JSON utility. And we're going to do from JSON, but we're going to use the generic from JSON. That way we can pass it the creature type so that from JSON knows what type it is working with. The creature, just like that. And now we also need to pass it what JSON data it's working with. It's going to be JSON string. And that's going to take that data, map it to a creature object, which is right here, and set YAMO to be equal to that. And that's pretty much all we have to do. And now we can access through YAMO, oops, through the object YAMO, different properties of YAMO, right? So level, name, and stats. And to show this, I'll do a debug.log and do yamo.name. All right, and go back into Unity, and I'm going to attach my JSON demo script file once it's done compiling to my camera just for testing. Click play. And it says yamo when it when it loads. Cool. And what's great about this is writing something to JSON from, say, a creature object. So if I were to take Yummo and want to convert it back into JSON, say I brought it in and I changed the name of Yummo or changed the level of Yummo to be equal to uh, 25, right? So that's now, Yummo is now level 25. Well, I wanted to write this back out to JSON. All I'd have to do is reverse the process. We would grab a string and I'll say, new Yummo new yamo or whatever you want to call it is equal to json utility dot to json and pass it our yamo object now that yamo object has the level of 25 because we defined that level before we're handling it here log this out what i could do is i could log out the whole string of new yamo just like that and it should show me that he is level 25 the one before, right there, is not, but this one is level 25. That's pretty cool, right? So you'd also want to write it up to a file, and you'd use the, the file system to do that too. And I have plenty of videos over that, but if you're interested in doing something like that and you, and you want a tutorial on that, uh, let me know, and I'll do one over writing files to the file system in Unity. That's going to do it, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Hope it wasn't too simple or too dumbed down, and I hope you look forward to more. Again, check out the Patreon campaign over at patreon.com slash gamegrind. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.